Welcome back, we're in our new topic. So we've just finished graphing. Now we're going to take it a step further to help us analyze maybe the data on a graph or in a chart. So now we are in rate of change, slide one, and that will be of nine eventually. <clears throat> our aim is why do we want to know how fast or slow something is changing? We're gonna investigate that. So without further ado, you've already started watching this video, which you're watching right now. And let's go over to the notes. So as you're reading this section here, please make sure you're annotating in your notes. If you need to pause the video to do that, make sure that you hit the pause button and come back after. So we're gonna be looking at mainly X, axis being time and Y, axis being some variable that's shifting or changing, and we're going to calculate how fast or slow that is happening. So here, when we're looking at this example here, we have a formula. And this is a good time to introduce to you uh, a new link that is in your work guide that leads you to the Earth Science Reference Tables. I will be calling it the ESRT for short. That is this document here. Okay. You can have this open simultaneously as well. And what I would point out to you is that there's a section here on page one where you can see rate of change in your formula being change in value over change in time. That is the calculation, okay? So let's come back here. Let's do this one as our example. So we've got time in days, we've got rainfall in centimeters, that's what's in the parentheses are the units. We've got four days, we have four measurements. We want to find out over here what the rate of change is, so how fast or slow was the change from day one to day four. We're gonna show work, so maybe if you are here with your notepads, you're gonna be showing work. If you are remotely, you're doing the work and then following along on some of the other ones. So, rate of change equals change in field value. So, we need to understand what the word change means. Well, change, mathematically, we're going from one place to another, and change is the amount in between. So we have a starting number and an end number. We have to find out how much is in between, therefore, we are going to subtract. So change in field value here, and it says change in time. Occasionally, you may just be given one time. So you'd have to assume the beginning was zero, and they're just giving you one time. However, this question is giving us two times. So I always like to put the larger time in front. That's just my thing. Four, four days minus one day. Apologies for the board. So in order for us to get the information on top, we have to see what synchronizes with this time over in our chart. So we've got four days, come over here. So we're gonna find four days around here and it goes with 16 centimeters of precipitation. In this case, the precipitation is rainfall. Now at day one, we come up here, or we come over here, and we find day one, and it has a rainfall of four centimeters. We can't leave it like this, we have to simplify. I'm gonna change up the colors so it doesn't get too blue, and when we reduce the top, we end up having 16 minus four, 12 centimeters. We have four days minus one day, which gives us three days. And if we simplify more, because we cannot leave it in fraction form, I like decimals, it's science, I want extreme accuracy. We divide these and we end up with four now, <clears throat> we can't just leave it four. We have to find a way to combine these. So the question first is, centimeters and days, are they the same unit? No. So we can't cross them out. It's not like having an X on the top and an X on the bottom where you can just cancel them and they disappear. So because we can't, di we can't get rid of them, we have to keep them. Best way to do that, Circle your units, carry them over if they can't cancel. So I would have four centimeters per day. Meaning every day on average, four centimeters of precipitation fell. 
So that's the rate, that's the speed at which the rain was falling at. The volume of water that was landing on the surface of Earth. Down here, try one on your own. So this is going to be the guide to practice. I want you to try it out. Eventually you're going to solve it. And I'm going to ask for some response. Okay, now that you've had a chance to pause it, it's asking for the rate of change between 0 and 4. So over here we have hours and centimeters of rainfall. So we have time 0 and we have time 4 with their corresponding rainfall total. So the formula is rate of change, abbreviated, RMC. It's going to be change, triangle usually means change, in FV. That's field value over change in time. <clears throat> You'll see these symbols more in chemistry and or physics, depending on what you choose to take. So the setup. We have two field values, but I like to do time first. So four minus zero. So four hours minus zero hours. And at four, we have eight centimeters. And at zero, we have zero centimeters. Now we have all the data plugged in, time to calculate. So solving it, let's reduce it, simplify it. Eight centimeters over four hours. Continue to simplify. Don't like, I don't like fractions. Two, and we have to leave the units because we can't cancel them. So copy. Pace centimeters per hour. So we have two centimeters per hour. Now a question I would have for all of you on the whiteboards would be, which rate is faster? So based on this rainfall versus this rainfall, which of these is the faster rate? And I'm also going to want eventually have all of you explain to your partners at a distance why? So go ahead, pause. So that's the end for the guided section. You will be expected to work on your independent practice, which you will find here. If you click the link for your access points, it'll bring you directly to these questions and you can begin working on them Please make sure that when you get to the end, you go to the submission page for your independent practice, rate of change, so you can get your homework credit. Then, if you want, you have the option to do a challenge question. Once you're done with those, also the following will be a checkpoint. So make sure that I get an idea of how much you understand about the aim that we went over, as well as how do you feel overall? about this topic, okay? Once you're done with those things, you're on your way to the next section of rate of change. See you soon.